Hey guys, I hope everyone's safe, happy, and healthy during this crazy time and finding unique and crazy creative ways to pass the time without sports. As promised, um, I'm bringing you my MLB pre team preview series. No sports, no problem, even though it is a problem because I'm kind of going stir crazy. But I do have MLB the show, so that's passing the hours nicely. Sorry for the delay with this when the NFL free agency was still going on and a lot of crazy breaking news, insane stuff. So I wanted to make sure that was covered, especially with my Carolina Panthers. They are making me mad right now, so I'm going to something that will always make me smile, and that's talking baseball no matter what team I'm talking about. Plus, I had to do some research on the Seattle Mariners. I don't follow them on a daily basis, obviously, so I wanted to make sure I got the key points um, and the biggest things to look for in Seattle in 2020 and beyond. And obviously, they are in a rebuild stage like most are in the American League, it seems like. But, excuse me, Jerry Depoto, a very, very active and creative GM has helped replenish that pipeline and farm system nicely with two key major trades. The James Paxton deal with the Yankees, that netted him the Yankees top prospect, left-handed pitcher um, Justice Sheffield and the Edwin Diaz uh, Robinson Cano deal to the Mets netted them four quality top blue chip prospects, including the outfielder Jerry Coletic, Eric Swanson, uh, a relief pitcher, another relief pitcher, Batista, and a right-handed flamethrower, Justin Dunn. So they are getting there in that in that realm. They have they are ranked 11th in Major League Baseball in their farm system. And honestly, I don't think they've been that close to the top 10 in five or 10 years. So that's a nice step. In terms of free agency, they were pretty quiet and a little too quiet for Jerry Depoto's liking, I think, because he's always got his hand in so many different pots and trying to improve his team with a uh, small market uh, salary, not as not as plush as some other markets. But he did get Carl Edwards Jr., a relief pitcher. Um, he was a big piece, a key cog in the Chicago Cubs uh, 2016 title team. He kind of fell on hard times, just Carl Edwards just trying to find it again. He was yo-yoed back and forth in 2019 from the majors and minors. It just He just kind of lost it. And sometimes that happens to pitchers, one and one with the 847 uh, with Chicago. So hopefully this will be a fresh start for him. Um, they also brought back a familiar face, former top prospect, Taiwan Walker, who's been ravaged by many, many injuries and used to be able to throw 98, 99, 100 easily is down to like 85, 88 top. But he is trying to revive his career, show that he hasn't, show that he has some stuff left in the tank. And I'm really rooting for this guy because I hate when injuries curtail something that could be great. Um, so hope rooting for Taiwan Walker there. He all, Gonzalez, um, Marco Gonzalez, I think is their ace now, I guess, with uh, King Felix now fighting for a spot in Atlanta. And he's had, had a fantastic spring before the work stoppage, so that might be the smartest $1 million of Braves spend in 2019-2020 offseason. But for the Seattle Mariners, Gonzalez, they inked that the lefty to a four-year, $30 million extension and a fifth-year option that would push it towards four, four years, $45 million. Sorry, I'm trying to get those numbers in my head. Not exactly a mathematician over here, but that's a really good deal for them. Getting a stable piece 
He was very respectable in 2019, 16 and 13 with a 399 ERA. So that's big for them there. Uh, they've got Kakuchi, the Japanese um, pitcher. He had some nice, nice starts for them. He struggled a bit, six and six and thirteen, I want to say. I didn't relook at those numbers, but something around that was a bit of a struggle at times, but a lot of bright spots. And you know, those Japanese guys have six to seven to eight pitches, so I don't know how they keep it all straight. But he's a nice piece as well. Wei Yin Chen, they got him um, from the Miami Marlins, kind of another fresh start type of guy. And I think, although I thought this when he signed that big deal with the Marlins, that big ballpark would help him, but he just struggled uh, a lot with the home run ball and just kind of keeping the ball on the ground. And you would think uh, the fly balls wouldn't be a problem in the monstrosity of Marlins Park, but it ended up where Wei Yin Chen, just a long guy and an innings leader at the end for Miami. So hopefully he can get a fresh start uh, with the Mariners. But offensively, you've got the all or nothing beer league softball player type, uh, Daniel Vogelbach. He's my spirit animal, 208, 30, 30 homers, 76 RBIs, just the epitome of all or nothing modern day player but so fabulous to watch and proves that you don't uh, there isn't a style you need to look like to be a major league hitter if you can hit the ball people will find you and that's all that matters there uh they've got d gordon uh, still a doubles and triples threat still speedy uh he did get pop for peds so i'm a little weary on him still but He's still a serviceable Major League player. Malik Smith, one of my favorites from his brave days. He has struggled with the old can't sell first base, but he's working towards it. They've got uh, J.P. Crawford from the Phillies in a big deal as well. He's, he's working out some kinks. He strikes out a lot, but there's a lot of potential there. Shed Long. One of their top 10 prospects, second base, hit 263, five homers, 15 RBIs, and a cup of coffee. He struggled defensively, but you got to uh, take, the, take the lumps with a young club. Um, Kyle Seeger, their prominent star, third base, has dealt with injuries during his five-year $100 million contract, but has hit two, he hit 239. 23 homers and 66 RBIs in 2019. So I'm sure you'd like that average to be up there. But again, still prompt, still very effective. Uh, Mitch Hanniger, unfortunately, has dealt with back and core injuries. And he had a second back surgery earlier this offseason that would have likely, he's on the 60 day. D IL now, um, but with this work stoppage, he might be able to come back right when it starts. Who knows? And that would be a big boost to the Mariners. He's been uh, their best player over the past couple of years. The numbers last year weren't great because of those several back and core injuries that he dealt with. But um, I, Seattle will be scrappy because they've got a lot of veterans and a lot of people that know uh, know how to win ball games or try to win ball games, but they also got a lot of youngsters that are gonna learn on the job, shall I say. So it might be a struggle for them, and especially in that division with the Houston Astros, Athletics, and the Angels, who rebooted nicely this off season. We'll see how it goes, but I really like the prospects that they have in their system and how they are doing that. But there's your uh, 2020 Seattle Mariners preview. Let me know how I did and let me know if there's anything you would like me to add or delete. But uh, 